Hello, good morning, good evening. I don't know what it is for you, but good morning. No, good evening. It is Thursday and I am solo today. Chris is heading to Phoenix for a conference slash course for work. So he's leaving me for the weekend. My friend Pat, you know Pat, Billy and Pat, we did a clap last week, link up here. Pat asked me if I wanted to speak at a conference called Upstate Social Sessions about YouTube, making YouTube videos, what it's like to have a lifestyle channel. Of course, I said yes, I actually said yes before I could talk myself out of it. So I'm nervous to talk. I'm also very excited because Pat is really good at talking, he's really funny and we have a really good connection. Pat. I get along really well. We're really similar. So I think it will be fine. I trust Pat, so <laughs> I'm excited. Pat is about to pick me up and we're driving up to Rochester, staying overnight, and then tomorrow we are closing the conference. We are the final keynote speech, which is crazy. I'm not very good at talking to people. We'll talk more about that after. We'll go under here. Okay, so Pat and I, we're in Rochester right now. Yes. <laughs> we're about to tag team a closing keynote speech at a sure. conference, which is, Exciting and also terrifying. Yes, both of those things. Mm -hmm. um, it's early and it's also heavy to hold us. <laughs> like Teamwork. Bad and this is my first coffee, so I can't talk, mm -hmm. obviously. Our thing's at three o'clock. Our thing is at three o'clock. How do you feel? What are you feeling? Um, I'm feeling a little tired right now, but I'm feeling good. I feel like I'm not nervous, but I'm gonna get very nervous as soon as we walk in so that'll be fun also nervous but i'm feeling good right now so i'm excited we're gonna go meet Lindsay and nick they're here as well this is a little outside my comfort zone because i'm really bad at talking to people what could go wrong then let's <laughs> give a talk i'm terrible at talking to people <laughs> <laughs> i think the thing that people maybe are like you guys do videos about yourselves and you're used to talking uh i'm normally sitting in a room by myself when yes I <laughs> exactly me too <laughs> My lipstick is a hot mess. You can use your ND filter as a screen. So Billy and Pat got asked to speak at this conference called Upstate Social Sessions and Billy couldn't make it so Pat asked me if I could step in and talk about what it's like to have a lifestyle YouTube channel. I said yes before I had time to think about it, before I had time to talk myself out of it. Speaking and talking in front of an audience is terrifying and you would think that that wasn't the case because I make YouTube videos and I talk to you guys every single day, but talking to a camera and then putting it out to you guys is a lot different than getting up in front of a lot of people. Okay, hanging out, pre-talk. <laughs> Very nervous. It's weird not having Chris here, but I'm glad Pat is with me. I would never be able to do this alone. I am actually <laughs> shit-baked. Um, a lot of the presentations we saw today were like very advanced, very nicely done. So very nervous, but also very excited because this is something I want to do more of. And it's pushing me outside my comfort zone, which is great. And hopefully the more things that I do like this, the better I'll get at it, hopefully, um, and the more opportunities that will come along. So very excited, um, but I'm, I'm actually shaking. So it's super fitting that we just did a collab video together. If you guys haven't seen it, I'll link it up here. Kind of talk about finding your niche on YouTube and what it's like to vlog with your spouse. And uh, it was super fitting for today's session. Backpack is awkward. Leap, sit there. So a lot of times like as a freelancer, we want to get to a point in our career where we can say no to specific jobs and take the things that we really want to work on that we're passionate about or things that are more fitting to things that we're interested in. And so we get to a point where we can say no and then saying no feels really good. But sometimes you need to say yes. Saying yes sometimes really aids in, in personal growth and for me, I spend a lot of time at home, I don't talk to a lot of people, and it gets pretty lonely and I forget how to talk to people. So uh, saying yes to this was a huge um, chance for me to kind of work on talking to people, talking in front of people, and um, it's really important for me to do that. Get it out, get it out. Pre-show warm up. I'm feeling good. I was really nervous before lunch, then I had a big giant box of french fries, so that really helped. And then I got tired, and then I had coffee, and then it felt good to sit and relook at things, and now I'm feeling good. Till about two seconds before it starts. Yeah. My friends are just over there waiting for me to finish. So Peter McKinnon posted a video a couple weeks ago about YouTube being the loneliest job. I'll link it up here if you guys haven't seen it. You should actually really go and watch it. It's so relatable for me, not just being a YouTuber, but having been a freelancer for the last eight years, working from home, um, it gets lonely. And while there's a lot of perks to working from home, like using your own bathroom, like eating lunch whenever you wanna eat lunch, there's also a lot of downsides. And some of the ones that I found is that it gets lonely. And sometimes there are days where I literally go like three, four days without talking to anybody but Chris. 
And when I do try to talk to somebody, I lose all of my social skills and I literally can't like put together a sentence. And it's embarrassing as a 31 year old, like people are like, hey, and I'm like, er, what? And I think about my interactions and I'm like, what did I just say? What just happened? I've gotten used to being alone. I like being alone. Um, but it does get lonely and sometimes you do need to like push yourself out of your comfort zone and do something that normally you wouldn't do. Uh, so for instance, this week has actually been a huge thing for me, pushing myself outside my comfort zone because I volunteered with my friend Nick on Tuesday. We hosted an event called Dining Out for Life at Hotel Henry and we had to go around to every table and talk to people and I literally made Nick do all the talking because I hadn't spoken to anybody in a couple of days and I felt really uncomfortable and really awkward. But I mean, just being there and putting myself in front of those people was still like a step in the right direction. Conveniently stop near the bathroom. Are you gonna go throw up? I didn't throw up, I just had to blow my nose. We're about to go. I'm actually gonna shit my pants. Great content, yeah. like and subscribe. This was uh, actually an art installation of uh, <laughs> performance art. Oh God, I'm shaking. I can't even hold the camera, it's like this. I'm jiggling. We got this, guys. <laughs> Becky's really- <Team> <laughs> Is there a Sorry. number of times I've clocked myself on your hat? Um, <laughs> yep. We're gonna do great. We're giving ourselves a pep talk. Mm -hmm. This is a fun thing. We're yes. just talking about ourselves and we're two big idiots and mm -hmm. people will like it. And if they don't. Yeah, we'll unsubscribe. Yeah, unsubscribe. Yeah. <laughs> I'm out. I, can't, I have to take this hat off. <laughs> it was very scary. I nearly shit my pants, but it was worth it because. I feel great right now. I feel like I could do it again. And uh, it's just like, it's just cool to be up there speaking with one of your friends about something that you love so much and that you're passionate about. So anyway, the point of this is that sometimes it's really important to say yes. To say yes to something that makes you a little bit uncomfortable. Obviously not something that's like unsafe, but something that normally maybe you won't do. And I'm a very cautious person. Chris pushes me outside my comfort zone all of the time. With the adventures and things we go on, you know, He's very adventurous, I'm very cautious, but we balance each other out. Speaking in front of people is not something I do often, so it's really important to push yourself. It's like editing. It's like if I wanted to get really good at editing, I would practice editing and then improve my skills. So it's like if I wanna get good at talking to people or get good at speaking, then practice makes progress. And so the more I do it, the better it gets, and the more things like this that I can do. Are you filming anything? Yes, I'm filming everything. Great. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> We're gonna talk about what it's like running a lifestyle social media YouTube channel, which sounds super glamorous and is uh, not. <laughs> Both of our channels sur surround a couple, right? Like, so it's similar in that way, but the way that we tackle, the way we make our videos and what our content is about and the style that we use is, is very different, even if we're making videos about the same thing. Pat and Billy kind of started in a very specific niche and as they grew, their niche kind of like opened up. They were making videos about more things other than just yeah. getting married. Whereas Chris and I, we started very broad of just like documenting our adventures. And then as time went on, we kind of started fitting our videos into these boxes. So instead of just yeah. adventures, now we have these pillars of like, visuals, which is like photography and video tutorials, travel, which is like any travel anywhere in the helicopter or commercially or a road trip or whatever. And then the home, so home decor videos. And it's interesting too, you know, to call yourself like a lifestyle channel, right? It kind of means that you talk about whatever. I, I should caveat all of this by saying, you know, we're talking about YouTube because that's our platform, but really it's about content creation. You gotta go with your gut and create content or media or storytelling that's authentic to you. So there's sort of three questions that we ask each other or like we ask our partners when we're making these videos. Do you like it? Like, do you, do I like what I'm making this video about? Because if I don't like it, I don't think other people are gonna like it. The second question is, can you sustain it? So if you are thinking of starting a channel or you have this topic idea, is it something that has legs? And then the last question is, is it authentic? Right? Or will it be authentic? Okay, I'm ready to start a YouTube channel. Now what? Forget about the the gear and the topics and whatever, you just need to start. First will be the worst, okay? The first thing of the thing that you wanna do will be the worst one you'll ever do, hopefully. I think we all have this natural want of like, I'm gonna squirrel away all the stuff and I'm gonna plan, I'm gonna wait until everything is perfect and then I'm gonna have it perfectly and then I'm gonna drop it out there and everyone's gonna love it, it's gonna be so amazing and like that's not how it works. Either it's not gonna be perfect, which is fine, or you'll never do it because you're waiting for it to be right. I don't know if any of you guys follow Peter McKinnon. Anybody? Yes, yes. So one of his quotes and he lives by is like, done is better than perfect. Yeah. And so sometimes we're like really like perfectionists and I fall into this sometimes where I'm like, this video is not good enough, it could be better. And I beat myself up over it. And sometimes you're like, I don't want to post it yet. 
But then like, when are you gonna post it? Yeah, and then when will we be by. ready? Exactly. If you don't just do it, you don't just start, you're never gonna get to where you wanna go. Practice makes progress. So if you make one, you learn something. The second time you learn a new thing. And so that every single time you make a video or whatever and you're practicing, you're progressing every single time. Just gotta start doing it and be okay with being shitty, you know, it's fine. <laughs> Looking back on your first video, your 10th video, your 30th, your 100th video, it's like, oh wow, like I actually am making progress. And sometimes it's hard to feel that when you're making a video every single week, you have to just compare yourself to yourself. All right, we're getting uh, wrapped. We took up all of our time and we started late. So thank you uh, for listening to us blab forever. Please follow us and subscribe to our YouTube channels. Thank you. If you want to. <laughs> How was it, Pat? It was great. I had so much fun. I was really nervous right before we started, and then once we got, once I got the microphone and like I heard the first people laugh at one of my stupid jokes, I was like, okay, it's good. We're all good. <laughs> I feel like I rambled a lot, but Pat was fantastic. I was dying at you. All you the great. Yeah. There, and there's so many times I forgot words. Lindsay. Lindsay. They did such a good job. Seriously, how, it. How good were we? Um, on a scale from one to a hundred, they were like. 500. Thank you, not sponsored by us. And the hashtag not sponsored. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not sponsored. So guys, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell so you get notified when we post new videos. We will see you on the next one. See you next time. Bye. Bye. What's happening over here? Just so, living our best lives. Living our best lives. Casually. Can you do what you did in the other video? Can you play a dope track? If I take it down, would you Hello? Conference call. Dan, is that you? What are you doing tonight? <laughs> My banana is really brown and squishy. So mine, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Oh, uh, Interpretive art. I'm <laughs> here, hello, it's me, Sarah McLaughlin. Please help this banana with a donation to Pat. When I put your knife. Oh, it's very squishy. <laughs>